Hello everybody, welcome to this uh, update video for iPad users. Serif rolled out their newest uh, software update across Affinity Designer, Affinity Photo and Affinity Publisher. I'm under the impression that there's a whole bunch of videos about the desktop version, but only very few videos for the iPad users. And if you've been following me, then you know that I'm an illustrator. I predominantly illustrate now for children's publishing and for my illustration work, I always use Affinity Designer on the iPad and I always use the pencil tool. So I will be skipping the rest of the updates. This video will focus only on the pencil tool because this is the most important tool for my work and uh, the changes that were part of the most recent update, the 2.6.0 update, will really make your work easier and I would like to highlight what exactly changed in this video. So heading back to the pencil tool, I'm also going to use this older sketch of mine uh, where I created this illustration just to demonstrate uh, how the pencil tool changed and what you need to take into account. There's also some icons that you will see here in the contextual menu that have changed, so do not be confused. Everything is actually quite easy. In essence, there's no more forced smoothing. There's also better control over the stroke, so there's basically better control over what you're drawing. And there are some new auto close options that can really improve your efficiency. All right, so the very first thing that changed luckily is that there is no more forced smoothing. Previously, the pencil tool would always apply some level of smoothing. So we really didn't have full control. And when I was illustrating projects for clients, I felt very frustrated after the previous update because what I was drawing was unnatural and um, what I wanted was a feeling that is more organic and less vector-like because, you know, all my artwork, even if I use some texture, this is all vector brushes or vector shapes and uh, vectors tend to look a little bit more rigid. So the previous update really destroyed my workflow and caused me some frustration and I'm very, very happy that Serif got rid of this obligatory smoothing. So right now uh, you can draw lines that are more um, kind of rugged. Do I have an example? For example, if I wanted to draw the mane of this Pegasus in a more rough way, previously this whole line would be more smooth. What does it mean? It would get more rounded and the shape that I drew would not be reflected in the line that the software would draw. And on Affinity Forums, I found that a lot of artists, for example, who were drawing maps, uh, illustrated maps, they were in particular very frustrated because when they were drawing the outlines of the countries for the maps, then they needed all those tiny little details. They didn't want smoothing. And in my work, it was exactly the same. Sometimes I really wanted this more hand-drawn feeling and the smoothing would destroy everything. So right now this is fixed and the only way to get smoothing would be if you opt in, for example, for some form of a stabilization. So right now, if I click in here, you see nothing has changed here. There's a rope stabilizer or a window stabilizer, uh, which you can also set the force of the stabilizer here on the left side. So if I wanted my line to be, you see, more smooth, then you can use stabilization and uh, you can be more intentional, you know, <laughs> about choosing whether you want this uh, smoothing or not. So with this regard, you have full control over here. Now, another thing that changed in the contextual menu are the icons. I didn't take any screenshot or I would have to find some old uh, screenshots from, from my old work uh, to show you what exactly changed. But those two, two icons are different. You can also click on the question mark to see what is over there. Uh, the one on the left is about using line, using an outline. And the circle that is more full is about using fill. So if you want a line, Right now it's selected. You will just, oh, let's get rid of the stabilization. You will just get an outline. So for example, I could use this 
Let's increase the, the width of the stroke. I could use this when I'm drawing uh, or creating a project for a coloring book if I only want outlines. But for me, more often than not, I draw without any outline. So you can also start by going to the color studio and then just choosing a color from your swatches. And then you will have no outline. And if you want a line, you can select this use line symbol so that you can also draw with an outline. So right now, both of them are selected. You will recognize that something is selected by seeing that this gray background of the icon changed to black. That means that it's selected. If I don't want an outline, I just deselect use line. And then another important thing that changed is the auto close. There's like a whole menu of options here. Um, the first one obviously means that there is no auto close. Then there's close near, close far, and close always, which can really make your work very efficient at, uh, sometimes. So um, auto close basically connects the start and end points of stroke automatically. And uh, before this auto close, changed behavior and you really needed to come very near so this will be the second option close near to close a shape and oftentimes i failed to close a shape and it was again another thing that frustrated me so right now you can for example choose close near and you will have to again come quite close you see there's there's a small red selection that tells you, okay, this auto close will be recognized and the shape will be closed. So now it's closed, but I don't think I will be using this option. I think I'll go straight to either close far that you have more wiggle room. You don't have to go super duper close for the shape to close. It was a small mistake there. Let's do it again. You don't have to go super, super close and the shape will be still closed. Or close always is very cool. For example, if I wanted to draw the wing of this Pegasus, I would just go like this. And here I just let it go and it closes automatically. And this is exactly what we had before the previous update. So if I was drawing this cloud, I would start somewhere outside of my canvas. Sorry, that doesn't look pretty, but I would just draw what is essential without wasting my time to go all the way up here because this doesn't matter. The illustration will be cut here anyway. And now that we finally have this close always, I think I'll get back to it and I'll just get outside of the canvas, draw my cloud, release it, -da! and everything is closed automatically. So if I wanted to draw this um, tail, the same. Sorry, this doesn't look great. <laughs> uh, depending how you like to work, you can choose among all those options. You also don't have to close it off. You have to switch it off if you're just drawing with the stroke, so just with the line. Personally, I would recommend that you either choose close far or close always. And I think I'll stick to close always because this will just snap Look at this, this will just snap so fast and uh, have me save so much time. I just have to make sure that the whole fill selection is where I want it to be and everything snapped in a very pretty and fast way. So those new auto close options are much more intuitive. They will give you you know, the ability to create more natural line work, despite the fact that you're drawing with vectors. You will have better control over your style after all those uh, pencil tool updates. And uh, the new auto close will give you basically a better shape building capability. And the fact that smoothing is off, this is, I think, the best news, will mean that your vector illustrations will feel less mechanical and you will be able to embrace uh, some more imperfection in your perfect vector art, so to say. So what do you guys think about those new changes and about the update? Let me know in the comments or in our Facebook groups what you think. 
And uh, if you found this video helpful, please give it a like and make sure to subscribe to stay updated about any affinity news or new affinity tutorials. Thank you for watching.